Hey, this is Trinity. And I was um, watching something earlier today about this monk was talking about, um, you know, too much mental chatter and how, um, <clears throat> you know, when you have, you know, too much going on in your head, it's like you have mental diarrhea. When you have, like, in your physical body has diarrhea, you're worn out and you're tired, you're exhausted. And what gives you diarrhea is by eating something you're not supposed to, unhealthy. So what mental diarrhea is about is, you know, we're consuming so much information and that's not, you know, helpful. It's like we're taking in poisonous information and that's why we got so much crap going on in our heads. Can't function to the best of our ability if we got all the mental diarrhea going on. So how do we stop that? And so this monk talked about, um, I, it, identif we identify with, with things that are not us. Like, you know, there's lots of labels that we have in life about who we think we are. And these labels that we, you know, identify ourselves as can sometimes, um, we can over identify or they, it becomes, um, who we think we are and we are more than just one thing. So getting stuck in those labels can lead to this mental diarrhea that I'm exhausted from. I don't need this. So I'm going to work through it. Picked up the, the top five of the, um, the labels that I identify with and I'm going to pick them apart because I know I, I'm definitely full of crap. I'm learning that as I go with my practice of observation without judgment. It's been fun <laughs> learning so much about myself, mostly that I lie and I'm full of crap. So first label, which I know is complete bullshit because <laughs> technically, yes, it is a true statement when I say I am a homeowner. Uh-huh. Yes, I am on paper a homeowner. That's a real thing. It's valid. But I know when I use this term, I'm doing it specifically to assert my authority, to say that I'm, I'm valuable, to say that even say that I got better than other people because there's like a class difference. Once you say that you're a homeowner, that's totally different. Like my whole life I've been a tenant and now I'm a homeowner. But, you know, I didn't buy my home. <laughs> so it's total bullshit when I claim that title. My mother's paying my mortgage. Thank you, Mom. I love you. And it's a beautiful home. I'm really enjoying it. And I'm full of crap. When I say I'm a homeowner, what I and I'm realizing this because I've been using I've been saying this and I'm fully aware when I use it that I'm full of crap because um and I'm doing it specifically because I want people to know I'm important, I matter, I'm worthy, um, and somehow I like feeling better than other people. I hate to admit that, but it's true. It is true. <laughs> it's a different situation being a tenant and being a homeowner. It's like, um, I ha even though it's illusionary, blah, 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 um, ha owning my own home and knowing this is a space, you know, I'm probably going to spend the rest of my life in this home, I hope. And, um, that just feels like, um, on a different level of something I've never experienced before. So I'm excited, but still that's labels, schmables. It don't mean what you think it means. So the more aware I am of when I do that, maybe I can learn a little bit more from that. Okay, let's move on to the next label. Cause this is a good one. Mm. Crazy. Yes. I'm officially crazy. <laughs> uh, yeah, I have mental health diagnoses and I like to tell people right off the bat, you know, I'm super crazy. I'm fun. Oh yeah, but I'm crazy. Watch out. I like to prepare people. So then when things, something happens and I do something stupid, I'll be like, you know, I told you I was crazy. <laughs> so the label crazy to me really is just a, a, a big hot mass mess of excuses. You know, it's my bag of excuses. When I, when I screw up, I can just blame it on the mental illness, and that's bullshit. Okay, now moving on. <laughs> what else am I full of shit about? Um, the next label would be fat. 
I, I'm a fat person. Oh, yeah, I'm a fat, I'm a gluttonous pig. And, <laughs> you know, it comes to fat. You know, I realized how much I over-identify with fat because my daughter is a skinny little bitch. And, yeah, I can't relate to her. The fact that I, I call her a skinny little bitch, <laughs> I feel a disconnect there because a part of me, like, I know I bond with my mother because we're both fat. And we could both talk and relate about being fat people. But, you know, I don't have that connection with my daughter. And there's a part of me that feels a loss, that we don't have that. We can't bond over our unhealthy weight, which is bullshit. You know, I should be happy she got some good genes. She got something good from her father. And she's skinny. She's healthier. And that's awesome. So, once again, I'm full of crap. <laughs> also, that gives me an excuse to be lazy. I like being lazy. And I like food porn. I like to enjoy food. Like, you know, if life is disappointing me because it's hard. But, you know, I've learned I can do hard stuff. So that's another excuse. But um, <clears throat> I've learned that, um, <clears throat> yeah, I can really enjoy food and use it to reward myself, give myself pleasure of, oh, life's giving you a hard time, things are difficult, uh, let's go get a burrito and celebrate. <laughs> we can eat whatever the hell we want. Uh, yeah, so it's also like protection. I've talked about this before, fat being a lair of protection in a dangerous world, and I don't feel like I'm ever going to, you know, make great strides and make big changes in my health and well-being and coming to diet and exercise, I would really like to make great changes there. But that's really hard, especially if I have this mentality of, you know, being attached to the identity of being a fat person. I have to really dissect that if I ever want to make changes in that arena, right? Okay. Let's move on to the next one. Okay, the next identifying label I like would be artist. I consider myself an artist and you know it's about um, I create therefore I am I have value because I'm a creator and you know I'm not the kind of artist that's gonna be like known in my lifetime <laughs> that's not the kind of artist I am <laughs> I am I'm more the, the tortured fool that nobody knows about maybe maybe when I'm dead somebody will come across some of my crap on the internet whatever. Um, <laughs> because it's not like I would want to be famous. I don't like fame at all. Ick. I mean, don't get me wrong. I like attention. Yeah, I like attention. But fame is problematic. I don't, I don't necessarily care for that. See, I have a, a childhood friend that's like a sister to me that she uh, lives in Belgium and she has a career as a professional artist. And it's not like I'd want to, you know, change my life for hers. I don't want to do what she's doing. It's not my thing. Um, but I'm, I know I'm very like proud of her and like what she's accomplished. That's wonderful. But I'm, my artist path is very different. But the fact that it means, uh, it comes to a place of I am valuable because I can create, I have value. Okay. Now moving on to number five. <laughs> Uh, label number five to me would be sexy. I identify as, it is, uh, uh, I give pleasure, therefore I am valuable. Okay, this is a tricky one because, <laughs> you know, I want to have healthy relationships, right? Um, but if I, if I spend my life you know, feeling like I have to be, to be sexy, to be valuable, that's not going to work out in the end, because, you know, I'm getting older now, and I realize <laughs> life ain't just about, you know, the pretty stuff, and, um, you know, I don't know, there's a part of me that's starting to get, it's not like just vanity, it's in my little pea brain, it's been okay for me to be fat, and still be sexy, but for some reason, turning 50, I'm gonna turn 50 in a couple years, 
And for some reason, that's the cutoff market marker in my brain, in my little pea brain. That once I turn 50, I can no longer be sexy and fat. They don't go together anymore when you're that old. For some reason, I don't understand why my brain works that way. I wish maybe that threshold would have been a lot sooner. Maybe if it would have been like 30, uh, um, I would have had like more of a running start at this thing. <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> yeah so sexy what is sexy um i can be old and not thin and still be sexy can i can i or do i need to cling on to that label of sexy to feel valuable is that the is that the issue huh so yeah i think a lot of this comes down to just you know me trying to sell myself as better than I think I am, or me being lazy or fearful to me like having these labels to have a sense of value. My value is more than just one thing. If I just try to compartmentalize my value is, is, is to these little things, maybe it's more. Maybe it's, you know... I want to reframe my sense of value and not and take it away from just these labels and make it I don't know. I'm going to have to do a part 2.